Greetings, YouTube. Um, my wife wanted to see the movie Soul, so she picked up a subscription to Disney+, Plus, which meant I got a chance to look at uh, both the beginning of The Mandalorian, and uh, which I've quite enjoyed the first two episodes of, and the first five episodes of WandaVision. And a spoiler ahead for a character that's introduced at the end of WandaVision. If you don't want to know, stop watching now. Um, but uh, it's her brother who is most definitely dead. And because of the way they've introduced this, using the actor from the X-Men uh, storyline from hold held at one point by a different corporation, they've kind of collapsed the universe um, on both a in and meta in universe and metaverse uh, level. So it was kind of intriguing. I think they, I liked the way they did that. Pardon me. But it got me thinking of speedsters. Now, I, be I believe I've done at least one video on speech here on my channel before, and I have always believed that, um, with rare exception, um, speed, super speed as portrayed by The Flash and by Quicksilver um, and any number of other speedsters over the years in different comic universes, is a win button. There simply isn't any way for normal humans or normal supervillains to... Uh, even some of the more powerful ones, to counter super speed. There just isn't. And because of this, they have to come up with all kinds of convoluted ways of canceling it out, which always seem really stupid, um, because it is just so easy to win. Um, unless you're going up against godlike creatures, almost nobody that the Flash faces or Quicksilver is ever going to face has any chance whatsoever of defeating them. They just don't. Um, and for example, in, uh, one of the X-Men movies, uh, it's the one where Magneto drops an entire baseball field on Washington, D.C. Yeah, it was, it was not, it was not a good movie, but by, by and large, but uh, there's a point where they have Quicksilver with them. And in this particular universe, he is, he's kind of hinted at that he is the son of Magneto, but there's no mention of a twin sister. So it's two different universes, two different background pot kind of things. Um, so we know he's a mutant, and he is with the group for a certain period of time, but then they say, okay, we need you to, you know, okay, we're going to head off and take off from this point on our own for story reasons, I guess, because there was no reason that he shouldn't join them because every single problem they had from that point on in the film could have been solved instantaneously, literally, by a speedster. Quicksilver could have solved every single problem they had, and the effects of the film would have been very boring, right, for the most part. There wouldn't have been the film because there would have been no conflict. It would have just been Magneto saying, like, pointing his finger and saying, could you, yeah, thank you, and could you, uh, yeah, thank you, and could you, yeah, thanks, we're all done. Um, you know, things like that, you know, just, they, they could either, it was just, yeah. Um, he could just solve everything. And uh, that makes a boring storyline, so that's why we don't have it. But it got me thinking about bullets. Because not only do you see among speedsters, but I've actually seen, you know, like time controllers and things like that where time stops. There'll be a, a bullet traveling through the air, and someone will take the bullet, and they'll, like, turn it sideways. And when time goes back into normal mode, the round then goes that way. So that was going this way, and they turned it 90 degrees, and that, that's not thats not how physics works. Now, I understand that superheroes break physics. I get that. 100% understand that. But everything that isn't superheroes has to obey the law of physics, otherwise you break immersion completely. We have to project ourselves into that world. And if you are breaking physics down to the level of, I throw an object and it no longer behaves the way a thrown object go, behaves, then you're not even in a fantasy land anymore. You're just making things up because you're, 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 you're lazy. So if a round's going this way and you turn it sideways, you've made the round slightly less dangerous because now the thinner point is no longer hitting for, side, forward, but it's still going to hit that same location. And if the person firing the round is any is smart and they're aiming for center mass, it's still going to hit them in center mass. Okay? No, if you want to actually get that round to be going someplace else, you have to do something else. So I started thinking about it. If I were a speedster and I wanted to stop rounds, what would I do? Well, the most comical thing to do would be to like just hang something off of it. For example, 
here's a, an eyeglass case. You can just go around the line, around and let go. So now that now the round is traveling and suddenly the round is here and it's got a three ounce case hanging off of it. Now the amount of energy that round had has not altered. That was imparted on it by the gunpowder within the casing when it was fired. So suddenly it weighs six, eight, ten times as much as it did before. And it has a hell of a lot more surface area and, and drag. So it's just going to go boom, 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 onto the ground comically. Um, but other things, you, a much easier thing to do would be to change its trajectory. Now, if a speedster runs along and just kind of pushes it this way. So now the round is still for, moving forward, but now it's also moving in this direction. So it's got two, now it's now got two forms of energy imparted to it. So it's going this way, this way, okay? The problem being, of course, is that the speed is move, speed is moving so incredibly fast that the amount of energy they imparted on the round is probably greater than the amount that was imparted by the gunpowder. So they are now probably deciding it's going that way much more quickly. And that's dangerous if they've actually shot it off this way because it's going to go like into suborbital range and then slowly arc its way back down and maybe hurt somebody. Any luck, it'll fall in the ocean. There's a lot of water in the world. Um, but a smarter thing to do would be to do this, to go from high to low. Just, that wouldn't take much. Because again, you're moving at super speeds. You're imparting a fair amount of energy. So now the round is headed at the ground and it's going to bury itself in the dirt. Or if it's headed at a hard surface like a, like a wooden floor, it's going to go through. Or concrete, it's probably going to bury itself. Because again, the speedster is probably imparting a heck of a lot more energy to that round than the gunpowder did. Um, so you've now rendered that round useless. But just taking a round and going, oh, is absurd. Now there was a, shoot, there was a, a black science fiction story about a kid that finds a gun. It was like an updated version of Laser Blast, and I can't remember the name of the movie at the moment off the top of my head. But it was very entertaining. I quite enjoyed it. And I am looking forward to looking listening to the commentary track on it because there is one. Um, was it Kin? It might have been Kin. Yeah, it could have been Kin. Um, and it was very entertaining. Quite highly, highly recommended if you like a good solid, uh, tight little science fiction story. Um, that is, in many ways, a remake of Laser Blast, but still in a much better way. Um, and in it, the guy actually takes the round, moves it, and puts it, like, in front of the shooter's forehead, pointing at him, as opposed to now the round, instead of going this way, the round's going this way. And when time starts back up again, the guy, guy dies. But again, if you put the round against the guy's head, and you start it up again, the round is just going to continue going that way. Because physics okay physics doesn't care that you've moved it of course maybe now if time actually stops are you imparting any energy to it at all or is it is the amount of energy exactly the same as it was prior to that's an interesting question regardless it's not going to shoot the dude in the head now if you'd taken the round and put it in it behind his head and then let go now it's gonna messily because now it's going to spray brains all over you who is currently standing in front of the dude hopefully you're not standing directly in front of the dude because it potentially could go through both sides of his skull and still hit you um not only are you wounded but now that you have bloodborne pathogens to deal with um but yeah speedsters are a win button flat out like i was remember watching this the, the i watched the first two full seasons of flash and i started watching the third one and it was like oh Look it! It's another speedster enemy. Oh, yay! And I never finished watching the third season, which I want to because the reason I wanted to see the entire Flash series, besides some of the characters entertaining, is that I have a major love of Gorilla Grodd. I am a fanboy for anthropomorphic gorillas. Well, they are anthropomorphic, but sapient gorillas. Um, so yeah, Gorilla Grodd is awesome. And uh, that's the reason I wanted to watch it. And I know that he's going to actually show up properly in season three. So I actually have to get my button gear someday and finish watching that series. But I'm just like, oh, look it. It's a, it's another speedster. Yeah, they couldn't come up with any better, you know, psychological storylines that might, like, you know, 
depend on the science that the character knows and not his superpower because that's a wooden button it's really boring and they uh, yeah, lazy fucking right like having the same actor play different versions of himself in different multiverses just because they want to keep that actor in the series even though he essentially was you know ended at yeah yeah it was horrible um the, the writing of that did not thrill me in the least um but there's a point in the early part of the series where there's two guys. It's uh, Captain Cold and his buddy with the flame thingy. And they're uh, Snurk and his, his ex-partner, who I think he kills. And they're firing, they're supposed to be firing pistols this way, trying to catch, capture um, uh, the flash between them. And of course, they're aiming at each other, which was, which was not smart. But they're humans. And even though Flash is not advanced to the point where he is his highest speed level that he like hits at the end of second second season. He is still so far beyond the capacity for human reactions. Is that he could have he could have like gone home, made a sandwich, come back, and they still wouldn't have pulled the triggers far enough to be a danger to him. You just can't react fast enough to hurt a speedster. Humans don't work that way. But again, that makes them a win button and makes the story really boring. So, from a practical standpoint, just like if Tony Stark was smart and gave powered armor to everybody, like, you know, Falcon and Hawkeye and Black Widow and everybody and Cap, they all get powered armor, suddenly their problems are almost zero because now they can do much more than they could before. If you apply logic to the to most comic universes, things break down greatly. Like Bruce Wayne is far more useful to the universe than Batman. Um, Tony Stark is more useful to the world than Iron Man. Reed Richards is more useful to the universe than Mr. Fantastic. But if you apply logic, they all fall apart. So yeah, we don't do that for the most part. Um, so yeah, um, speech to a win button, and they handle bullets weird. Because bullets don't behave the way they seem to be portrayed in comics and movies. And I kind of wish they did. Because if you if you treated them realistically, so everything that isn't a superpowered being is treated like the real world, that's cooler. But again, it's not just comic book movies that do this. Action movies have been treating bullets as very plastic, dynamic things in a way that they are not in the real world for a very long time because it's convenient to the storyline. Um, so it's not just, you know, something that comic book movies do. It's just they're the most egregious examples I can think of. Um, and speedsters make it the most laughable. Um, so, yeah, let's talk about speedster just because we can, because we are nerds and comic fans and movie fans and... Uh, some of us have played, you know, tabletop role-playing game versions of superhero games. Um, and though I never did play a speedster, now that I think about it. For the most part, we seem to have seem to have ignored speedsters. We my, my friends found other ways of hitting the win button. 